International Soccer Preview, we are Soccer Files Canada. Welcome to Series 20, the 2023 African Cup. This episode is looking at the players of Cape Verde. Here we go. Hello and welcome to the International Soccer Preview by Soccer Files Canada. I'm Kevin and this is a continuation of Series 20 on the 2023 African Cup played in 2024. Uh, we have done a full and short version on the groups and teams and now we're looking at the players of each team uh, this episode covering Cape Verde's uh, players. We're doing this media cast in two parts. So part one here is a look at the candidates for the squad and their likelihood of making it. Part two will come out when the squad lists are released and the final squad selected. And we think that'll be in early January. At that time, we'll go back over the list we compiled today and see who made it and who didn't. And we'll also uh, cover a few other things that I'll talk about uh, at the end of this media cast. We did do a, a media cast on the players of Cape Verde going into the 2021 African Cup, uh, which took place in January 2022. So uh, you can check the link for uh, that in the show notes. Uh, they provide biographies on the candidates in quite a bit of detail. And since a lot of that is still relevant, uh, we've decided not to commit ourselves to full player media casts every two years for the African region. So we're going to be treating this one as more of an update. Uh, in that series, we were able to show uh, who made it and who didn't make it to the final squad, but we could only go as far as predicting who the starters were going to be. So here we'll begin with the list that we compiled for the previous cup, and we'll review who made the squad and who didn't, and update by saying who the starters uh, actually uh, turned out to be. Uh, th then we'll turn our attention to 2023 and update the players based on their participation over the past two, uh, two years. And we will thus emerge with a new list of players and their likelihood of making it to the squad. Uh, also, we are going to put a few players in the spotlight, and these will be players who were not covered in the media cast for the previous cup and who have a good chance of starting. Uh, any main player that we don't put in the spotlight here uh, means that they were covered in the media cast for the for the previous cup, and uh, actually that'll be most of the players. Um, and the information in the previous media cast is not too outdated. So again, we refer we uh, we refer you to the uh, link in the show notes uh, for that previous. Um, uh, media cast. And for fun, we're going to finish uh, today with our early predictions on who we think will be the starters, and we'll let you know also what to expect in part two. So just before we get started, um, um, we have made a separate video on what we'll be covering over the next nine months. So YouTube watchers can see that link on the screen. And again, it can also be found in the show notes for both watchers and listeners. But in short, we have completed our series on the groups, teams, and players, at least uh, part one of the players, uh, for the 2023 Asian Cup. And now we're focused on the 2023 African Cup. We have... Um, produce the uh, short and full versions for the groups and teams. And uh, now, as you see, we're starting or, or we're uh, into the player series uh, here. So again, both of those uh, cups, the Asian and African cups, take place in early 2024. And we've also started coverage of World Cup 2026 qualifying. OK, let us begin. and. Um, uh, we're looking at the candidates here from uh, uh, for um, Cape Verde, and we begin with the manager, and uh, not much to talk about here because the manager has not changed. Uh, it is Bubista, 
uh, leading them through again. He has been uh, the manager of Cape Verde since 2020 and uh, did lead them through the uh, African Cup in 2021 where they finished in the round of 16. So they passed the group stage there and made it to the round of 16. So had four games uh, in the cup there. All right, let's uh, begin with goalkeepers then. And um, we're going to go back to uh, 2021 and see who the candidates we had on our list were. were. And uh, we had three definite candidates. The first one, uh, Bozina. Uh, the second one, Marcio Rosa. And the third one, uh, Kevin Ramos. Um, his name is actually Kevin Ramos Sousa, and now a lot of uh, sites are listing him as Kevin Sousa. So uh, we're going to change that uh, here uh, uh, a little bit when we get to 2023. Uh, back to 2021, though, we also had a likely candidate in uh, Dylan Silva. So I'm not sure why we uh, had four uh, such strong candidates. I'd have to go back and listen to uh, figure that out. But they uh, only brought three to the cup. And we were right in our uh, initial choice. Vozina, Rosa, and uh, Kevin Ramos, or Kevin Sousa, uh, were the ones uh, selected there. Uh, in terms of uh, what actually took place, it was Vozina. Uh, really, who was a starter, although he didn't start game one because he was out with COVID. But he came back for game two and played that, uh, was a starter for the next three games. However, he was red carded in game four. So in both cases, in game one and uh, in game four, it was uh, Marcio Rosa who replaced him. So he was the uh, second string keeper. Okay, we're going to erase the... Um, uh, going to erase the highlights from 2021 and uh, turn our attention to 2023 here. So uh, Bozina uh, remains a definite candidate and he still seems to be the starting keeper. Uh, he did um, miss six games in a row uh, in the period that we're looking at. Uh, so we did have some other keepers coming in. Uh, in all, he started 10 of their 18 games Um uh, so uh, we we still think he's a starting uh, keeper despite those missed games. He is uh, 37 years old, though, so they will be looking to replace him. Um, Marco, Ro uh, sorry, Marcio Rosa. We uh, change his name now to a black text because he has been involved in the tournament, and uh, we have him as a definite candidate. And now we're going to change uh, Kevin uh, Sousa, uh, Kevin Ramos's name. To Kevin Sousa because he um, uh, it seems to be going by that name uh, you know, on more sources. Uh, I don't know why I'm telling you all this because we're deleting him from the list anyway uh, since he hasn't played um, since June 2022. Um, just one appearance uh, since the Cup. Uh, there on the bench and uh, Dylan Silver remains a uh, possible candidate he was absent for a while obviously for the cup uh, but he returned to appear on the bench for seven of the last ten uh, games and then uh, a late comer to the show we will add uh, Bruno Varela um, as a possible candidate and I think I made a mistake there Dylan Silva was a likely candidate last time. Now he is down to being a possible candidate. So we have two definite candidates in Vozina and Rosa and two possible candidates in Silva and Varela. Let's, let's cover what's happened in the two intervening years. Uh, a bit of an odd story with a, a player who I'll actually put on the list here, uh, Sixton Molan, but I'm putting him as seemingly off the squad. And uh, what happened with Molan was that um, he looked like he was uh, coming in after the African Cup to make a bid to be the second string keeper. Uh, but then he disappeared. So uh, for the first two games that Bozina were away, um, that was in June 2022, he got two starts. Uh, but then he was never uh, recalled. So uh, the, uh, the um, Dutch-born... Uh, Sixton Mullen kind of in and out of the squad uh, quickly. But I wouldn't be surprised if we do see him uh, coming back in the future. Uh, meanwhile, um, 
uh, Rosa, when Bozina was uh, out, was out, uh, seems to be reinstated as the backup keeper. And um, we're not really sure who the third string keeper is because they uh, both had a try uh, starting um, one of the games, Dylan Silva or Bruno Varela. But uh, I would give the nod to Dylan Silver as the third string keeper. Anyway, we're not really predicting the subs here, uh, just the starters, and we will come back at the end uh, to do that. Okay, that is the goalkeeping situation, and um, we're going to uh, uh, predict Bozina as the starter. I will do it now. And uh, in the spotlight, we have no uh, real new players to talk about there, because we would only do players with a chance of starting. So let's move on to the central defense and look at the candidates back in 2021. And we had a definite candidate in uh, Roberto Lopez, uh, kind of an interesting player he is. His nickname is Pico, so you'll sometimes see uh, Pico. And uh, he plays in Ireland and is actually Irish born. Uh, we had no likely central defenders back in the previous cup, but we had three possible ones in Dini Borges, um, Carlos Ponk, and uh, Stephen Fortes. Uh, those three. And then we had uh, three players who were below that level, possible uh, but unlikely or seemingly off the team. And um, uh, that is it. But we're not going to add those players to the list uh, just because it gets too complicated if we do. So uh, let's talk about the 2021 Cup. Actually, all four of the players on our list uh, made it, and all four at that time had not competed in a tournament. So uh, Roberto uh, Lopez, I'm going to actually uh, change the name here to uh, Pico uh, so that we avoid confusion. And, um, well, I'll change the name because all of these players have been through the Cup. So now Dini Borges and, um, uh, no, Carlos Ponk and Stephen Fortes are going to be removed from the list uh, right away here. But let's uh, talk about what happened in 2021. It was actually uh, Pico or uh, Roberto Lopez and um, left back uh, Stopira. So we'll talk about Stopiro when we get to the left-back position. And uh, Stephen Fortes, all three of those players uh, in a three-man back line throughout the Cup. And the only deviation was that uh, after Game 1, uh, Dini Borges came in and replaced uh, Stephen Fortes uh, there. So three-man back line throughout the tournament, uh, including left-back Stopira. Uh, okay, let's get rid of the highlights here and turn our attention to uh, 2023. And we still have uh, Roberto uh, Lopez as a definite candidate. And uh, Dini Borges now moves up also to being a definite candidate. And um, uh, Carlos Plonk uh, was selected for the Cup uh, uh, and was a substitute there. Uh, and just seeing if he got on the field. He didn't um, uh, uh, didn't see any action in the Cup and has not played since the 2021 uh, African Cup there. So he is off the list. And so is Stephen Fortes, despite uh, starting and finishing uh, a couple of games. I think I said he was replaced after game one. Uh, that was a mistake. He, he started three of the games, and uh, Dini Borges just replaced him for... Uh, one of them. Anyway, Stephen Fortes is gone, uh, last appearing in the African Cup there. Uh, and so, um, uh, in addition to uh, Lopez and Borges, we have a new candidate at the likely level. That is uh, Logan Costa. And then we have, uh, well, we're going to move Stapira over to the central midfield here because he... Uh, has been playing in that position during and after the Cup. So uh, Stopira, coded as a left-back, but uh, um, playing as a centre-back, as a possible candidate. And uh, Ivanil, Ivanildo Fernandez as a possible candidate. And finally, one more, uh, Del Miro. So let's just um, summarise that. We have uh, Roberto Lopez, or Pico, 
uh, and Dinny Borges as uh, definite candidates, and then we have uh, Logan Costa as a likely candidate, and three possible candidates in left back Stopira, Ivanildo Fernandez, and Del Miro. Let's see what has happened over the last two years. So, um, Pico has remained kind of um, uh, the staple of the defense throughout. And it did eventually change from a three-man backline to a two-man backline. So uh, Pico, or Roberto Lopez, was paired with a variety of players. So we saw even in the cup, uh, Stopiro and Borges there. But recently, um, Fernandez here and um, Costa have uh, come into the picture uh, a bit more. Okay, that's the situation. In terms of starters, we predict that Pico uh, or Roberto Lopez will be a starter, but we can't be really sure of his partner. We would say at this point, uh, Logan Costa seems to have the best chance, but we're not willing to uh, um, turn his name to green on that one. Okay, so uh, Roberto Lopez are uh definite candidate we're going to actually put the spotlight on logan costa though because he is new and because he has a decent chance of starting so logan costa got his first cap in march 2022 and he has started six uh games including the last two of their remaining 15 games uh during this period he was also subbed in for two and on the bench for four and there were only three matches that he wasn't selected for so uh, that's why we consider him a likely candidate and um he plays for toulouse in france and uh, was actually born in france and with uh, Stade Reims uh, before that um uh, that is Logan Costa. He's just 22 years old, so uh, a good future ahead of him here. And uh, that is the situation in central defense. So let's move on to the left backs here and uh, start with uh, the 2021 situation. So we had a definite candidate in Stopira. Uh, at that time, we've since moved him to uh, central defense, so we'll be erasing him from the list when we turn our attention to 2023. Uh, we did have a possible candidate in Dylan Tavares, and um, that was all that we had there uh, in 2023. Uh, however, when the uh, squad uh, list came out, no, it wasn't when the squad list came out, uh, we are moving... Uh, uh, João Paulo Fernandes, uh, kind of acting as if he's a new player, but he was actually uh, on the list as a central midfielder. Uh, he was uh, rated as a possible candidate, uh, but he was selected. Uh, but now uh, we're going to be moving him to um, uh, to the left back position. But I should have done that actually once we turned our attention to 2023. So let's go back and uh, talk about 2021. And despite the three man back line in the cup, uh, there was a left back in two of the four games, the last two games. So in the last two games, it was actually a five man back line, three central defenders, a left back and a right back. And it was uh, Dylan Tavares that played the role. And uh, when it was a three-man back line, um, that kind of left-back position moved up to left winger, and it was Dylan Tavares um, uh, playing in that role uh, as well. Uh, okay, so that's the situation in 2021. Again, Stopira uh, did start there, but as a central defender. And so we're going to uh, move him from the list here, remove him from the list. And um, we're going to move uh, uh, João Paulo Fernandes up to um, a definite uh, definite level. And he's played in a tournament now, so we change his name to Black. And we have Dylan Tavares uh, also uh, now in Black and moved up to the likely position. So we have uh, João Paulo Fernandes as the definite candidate, Dylan Tavares as the likely candidate. So let's uh, talk about um, uh, what has happened since. And basically it's quite simple. Uh, he and 
uh, sorry, uh, Fernandez and Tavares have been rotating in the position with uh, Fernandez starting nine of their 18 games, uh, not always as a left back, actually. I've seen him as a, uh, as a right midfielder. Um, even and I believe he was also as a forward once so a pretty versatile player João Paulo Fernandes um, and Dylan Tavares has started 10 of their 18 games over the past two years so he's used quite a bit as well and um, as I say both of them rotating uh, I think we have João Paulo Fernandes as a definite candidate uh, because he um, also plays in other positions, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna say that it'll be a rotation here. That is our uh, pick for uh, the starter position, um, and uh, we don't need to spotlight either of those because we did that in 2021. Uh, okay, let's move on to the right back position. And back in 2021, we had a likely candidate in Jeffrey Fortes. Uh, where are we here? Okay, and we had a, oh, another likely candidate in Steve uh, Furtado. So two likely candidates there. We had uh, uh, two possible but unlikely candidates that we won't mention because they haven't uh, appeared since. Uh, okay, let us uh, look at the situation then back in 2021. It was uh, Jeffrey Ford, Fortes in the cup. Uh, used the same way as Tavares was on the uh, left side, and I'm not sure I actually covered that, uh, the cup on the left side, but both Fortes on the right and Tavares on the left uh, played as wingers in two of the games and as uh, left and right back in two of the games when they had that five-man defense. So uh, same thing on both sides. And that's that. Now we'll erase the uh, colors here. And we're going to um, get rid of uh, Jeffrey uh, Fortes here because uh, he has not appeared, uh, uh, not appeared for the team since the uh, African Cup. Um, Steve Furtado, though, uh, uh, moves down from likely to a possible candidate, and we have more. Uh, players to add here. Uh, one of them is Willie Semedo, and uh, Willie Semedo was on the list as a left winger, uh, and we had him at the possible level for the 2021 African Cup. Uh, however, he has moved back uh, diagonally across the field to a right uh, a right back position, and uh, now is playing as a right back. So we're going to put him as a likely candidate. Uh, Steve Furtado then, uh, a possible candidate, but his name does change to black because he uh, he was selected for the squad. Uh, he was selected for the squad in 2021, but didn't actually appear in any of the four games. I think they're allowed 26 players, but only brought 23 to the bench. Uh, so there are always a couple of players kind of uh, on the squad, but not even brought up to the bench. And I believe that's what happened to him. Uh, however, since then, he has started six of their 18 games, so is a possible candidate. And we have a new candidate also in Stephen Mora, uh, Stephen Morera, I'm sorry, and also in Jao Correra. So it looks like they were looking for uh, a right back here, and uh, we'll see what happened over the past two years. Um, Jeffrey Fortes, as we saw, who played in the Cup, is off the team. And it was Steve Furtado for a while, but it seems like they weren't satisfied uh, with him or with any of the new ones they brought in. So uh, Willie Tomato increasingly took over the spot and now seems uh, actually quite firmly entrenched there. Um, although he's only played, eight, he's only started eight of their uh, 18 games. Uh, so um, I think it's fairly recent that he uh, has been in the le in the right back position, though, and has been starting regularly recently. But anyway, for that reason, we have him as a uh, likely rather than definite candidate. Okay, so uh, that is the right back position, and we move on upfield to the midfield. 
and we begin with defensive midfielders, but we'll be doing defensive and central midfielders uh, kind of together. But let's separate them in terms of um, uh, what they're coded as and in terms of what we had for the 2021 African Cup. So we had a likely candidate in Marco Suarez and a possible candidate in Nuno Borges. And um, uh, that's it. We had one possible but unlikely candidate who didn't make the squad and hasn't returned since. Uh, so we'll just deal with these players because it's actually uh, quite straightforward. And uh, neither of them have appeared since uh, the Cup. Um, uh, sorry, Marco Suarez has not appeared since the cup, um, so we delete him from the list. Uh, Nuno Borges actually did appear after the cup in March of 2023. That was his last appearance, and uh, he uh, currently has no club. He's been unattached since January 2023, so there's no bigger death knell for your national team chances than to be without a club for a few months. So. Uh, uh, Nuno Borges, um, despite being selected um, uh, and uh, in in for the previous one, is now off the list. So uh, we're going to put a couple of other candidates here. We're uh, now turning our attention to 2023, and we have a possible candidate in Kevin Pina, and another possible candidate in uh, Kuka. Uh, both of those players coded as. Uh, defensive midfielders uh, there. Uh, but before we uh, talk about the situation, uh, we're going to look at the candidates for central midfield in 2021. So we had a definite candidate in uh, Patrick Andrade and a likely candidate in uh, Jamiro Montero. And uh, here we also had Jao Paulo who we have uh, since moved to left winger. Uh, he was a possible candidate here, along with uh, Nenas, um, a possible candidate. And we won't mention the uh, uh, candidates below that level. Uh, so let's now see what happened in 2021. And um, in the cup, uh, Borges, uh, Nuno Borges, uh, did start in game one, but didn't appear after that. Alongside uh, Borges um, was uh, Rocha Santos, and he is actually, uh, I think we had him as an attacking midfielder. He was coded as an attacking midfielder, but we're going to be uh, making him a central midfielder uh, for our discussion in this cup, so we'll kind of add him as a new candidate there. Uh, Rocha Santos and Borges then in the first game. Uh, we saw that Borges went missing, so... Um, Patrick Andrade replaced uh, Borges for the following games. And really, it was uh, Rocha Santos and Andrade as the central pairing here. But in one game, they did have a three-man midfield. And Willie Semedo, who uh, we now have in the right-back position, uh, was the player who joined them uh, for that. Okay, so we'll get rid of the candidates and um, see what has transpired since then. So uh, we moved to Miro Montero, who uh, was selected for the Cup and was a starter in the Cup, actually. Uh, he now moves up uh, to be a definite candidate, and his name turns to black because he's been through a Cup. Uh, we have a newcomer who we're going to put in the spotlight in um, uh, D-Roy Duarte uh, as, an, as a definite candidate. And... Um, uh, uh, João Paulo Fernandes um, uh, moves, uh, we moved him over to the left wing. Uh, we also have uh, Kenny Rocha, Rocha Santos now as a central midfielder and at the likely level. And Patrick Andrade, who had been a definite candidate, uh, moves down to the possible level. Um, and we'll get rid of uh, João Paulo who we're now calling João Paulo Fernandes. And uh, Nenas, we will also uh, get rid of because he last appeared in the Cup. And another player, by the way, who has not had a club uh, since January, not attached to a club uh, now for almost a year. So no way that uh, he's going to make the squad uh, in that case. Uh, okay, so... Um, 
let me just summarize the list uh, that we have then. Uh, we have uh, Montero and Duarte as definite candidates, uh, Kenny Rocha Santos as likely, and Patrick Andrade as a possible candidate. And uh, we're going to put the spotlight on um, uh, sorry, on uh, Duarte because he is a, a definite candidate and he has a chance of starting. So, uh, Deroy Duarte was born in the Netherlands and has been with the team since March 22. That's when he got his first cap and he has started 10 of their remaining 15 games, uh, subbed in for two and on the bench for one. So just one match that he wasn't selected for. So he is 24 years old and he plays for Fortuna Sittard in the Netherlands and was with Sparta Rotterdam uh, in the Netherlands from 2017 to 21. So uh, moved to Fortuna Sittard when, uh, uh, in 2021. So Deroy Duarte there, um, uh, a definite candidate, we think. And that is uh, it for central defense. No, I don't think I've said uh, what has happened since um, uh, over the past two years. So really, uh, in the central midfield, it's been quite a mix. Uh, all of the central midfielders that we covered here have appeared, as well as the two defensive midfielders that we had at the possible level, uh, Kevin Pina and Kuka, uh, have also appeared. Uh, sometimes in a, a three-man and sometimes a two-man uh, central midfield. Um, but basically, uh, uh, the category that we put them in or the likelihood level that we put them in kind of indicates how much they've played. And we do have Montero and uh, Duarte in a, a definite. So they've played the most, and we do think uh, that they will be uh, starters, uh, both of them. However, we will uh, say that Jumeiro Montero uh, won't necessarily be a starter as a central midfield because he has played uh, in other positions. We saw, we'll see that he played left winger in the cup, and I've also think I've seen him as a central attacking midfielder. Uh, he does move around the field. So we're going to say a definite starter in Jumeiro Montero, but not necessarily as a central midfielder. Okay, let's move on. We'll just talk a little bit about the position of left and right midfielder, although there are no candidates in these two positions. Um, uh, uh, Cape Verde uh, does use a three-man midfield, uh, a little less than half of the time, uh, but it is defensive midfielders or more likely central midfielders uh, who cover the position on both sides. So we've actually moved a couple of those uh, players um, from attacking midfield to uh, central midfield because they've been there more. Anyway, uh, that's it. And we'll move on to uh, left wingers. And really, uh, I always say this is kind of left attacking midfielder position, the upper left quadrant of the field. But this is particularly true with uh, Cape Verde, who change formations quite a bit. So they have formations that do have left wingers or sometimes left attacking midfielders. And from time to time, they do use two forwards, so uh, have a left forward. I think they also have used a 4-3-3 a three, three where there may be um, a left and a right forward. Anyway, so this position, the upper left quadrant of the field, and back in 2021, we had a death, or sorry, a likely candidate in Gary Mendez Rodriguez. And I am gonna call him Gary Rodriguez. Uh, so as not to confuse him with another attacker who uh, is called Mendez. And maybe that's why he goes by both names too. Anyway, Gary Rodriguez, a likely candidate. And uh, back in 2021, we did have Willie Semedo here as a possible candidate. But we, uh, when we get to 2023, uh, move him back to right back. Uh, we had uh, two possible but unlikely candidates who didn't make the squad and who uh, didn't appear since, and also two of them who uh, appeared to be off the squad uh, as well, and they haven't appeared since. So uh, we did have actually six candidates over here, but only two that were really worth mentioning. 
Uh, Gary uh, Rodriguez and Willie Tomato both did make it to the cup. Um, however, let me describe the situation because neither of them really played in this position. It was uh, the player we'd met, Jamiro Montero, uh, who played uh, in the cup and he, in fact, played in all three positions, left wing, left attacking midfielder and left forward. Uh, in the cup, all played by Montero. So uh, it's as simple as that. Now we will erase the colors uh, on the graphic and uh, talk about uh, 2023. So uh, we're going to add, um, oh, we were going to add uh, Jamiro Montero, but actually he kind of went uh, back. It was really only in the cup and maybe a couple of games after that he played uh, as the. Um, um, left winger we'll say or left attacking midfielder and has since moved back and has been playing in central defense a bit more in recent times so we actually won't add his name uh, to the list even though he was the starter in the previous cup uh, we are going to put um, a new candidate though uh, Bebe at the definite level and we will be doing a spotlight on him Uh, Gary uh, Rodriguez, we actually moved, oh no, he was at the likely level and remains at the likely level, uh, but we will remove Willie Semedo because uh, we've moved him now to the left back position. Uh, we have a, a few possible candidates, uh, Jovain Cabral is one, although he uh, has an injury concern. Um, He's with Sporting Lisbon in Portugal, but he's been struggling with injuries since March of this year, and I'm not sure he's going to make it to the cup. Uh, we also have Clay um, and uh, Helio Varela, uh, all as possible candidates. Um, however, none of them have played enough to uh, get into the spotlight here. So let's see what has happened over the, the past two years before we spotlight Bebe. And as we said... Um, Montero's moved back into the central midfield and uh, it's been a variety of players in in uh, this position so that includes players who are coded for this position like uh, Gary Rodriguez and Bebe but uh, also other out of position players like uh, forward Ryan Mendez and central midfielder Rochas uh, Santos. We did see that in the past he was an attacking midfielder, so sometimes does come up into the attack. Uh, however, ever since coming in, uh, it has primarily been uh, Bebe, so uh, we put him in the spotlight. And we should also point out that uh, the positions left wing, right wing and forward are a bit fluid here. Uh, some of those players just kind of shift around uh, among those positions. but. Uh, we'll 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 continue to call Bebe uh, a left winger, even though he, um, or actually all of them, uh, may shift positions. Anyway, let us do the spotlight for Bebe, and uh, he has been with the team since his first cap in March of 2022, and has since started 10 of their remaining 15 games, as well as subbing in for the five others. So, uh, a late joiner, but a permanent fixture. Uh, immediately and I say late joiner because he's 33 years old um, and so he joined the squad um, when he was 32. Uh, he has five goals for the team already in his 16 caps and plays for Rayo Valenco, uh, uh, sorry Rayo Vallecano in Spain uh, but is currently on loan to Zaragoza, uh, sorry Zaragoza in Spain and uh, mixing up my syllables here. Uh, he was with Benfica in Portugal from 2014 to 16, and actually with Man United uh, from 2014, 2010 to 2014. Uh, though I don't believe he played a game for uh, Manchester United. No, he played two games for Manchester United, but was mostly out on loan to other teams. So uh, Bebe was born in Portugal. Uh, maybe he was, um, I don't have any evidence he was trying to make the Portugal team. Uh, but anyway, uh, maybe he joined uh, Cape Verde um, 
because he realized he couldn't make the Portugal team. That's just speculation. I don't even know why I'm saying it. Okay, that is Bebe, though, and a definite candidate here. And to summarize, uh, we also have likely candidate Gary Rodriguez and uh, three possible candidates, Cabral, Clay, and Varela. Okay, moving over to the right wing. Um, we, uh, back in 2021, had... Uh, no definite candidates, but we had two uh, likely candidates. One was uh, Willis Furtado, and the other one was Wagner, or Wagner Goncalves. Um, and we had a possible candidate in Lisandro Sameda. So uh, Willie Furtado was selected, the first likely candidate. Uh, Wagner uh, was not selected and uh, has not uh, appeared since, so he is off the squad. We'll remove him uh, a little bit later. Lisandro Semedo uh, did make the squad, uh, but he was just a substitute coming into games two and four there. Uh, so let's uh, talk about the situation of the right wing. Uh, it was actually uh, not Willis Furtado as we expected in the position. It was left winger Gary Rodriguez in games one and two of the cup. Uh, Lisandro uh, Semedo, who we thought was a backup, uh, actually started game three. And uh, Ryan Mendez coming in uh, in game four there. Um, so going back to our list, uh, Willis Furtado. Uh, we had as a likely candidate. In fairness, though, we knew uh, he would probably be a substitute. Uh, he uh, was a regular call-up, but not often a starter. And um, furthermore, uh, if there was any notion of him being a starter, he had COVID uh, the first game. So maybe that undercut his chances even that much more. Uh, Wagner Goncalves uh, is another player who currently is without a club. He is uh, 28 years old or 27 years old, and um, uh, was uh, selected for the squad. He appeared uh, briefly in game one, uh, coming in as a sub just at the end there, but hasn't uh, appeared for the team since uh, since the cup. Uh, so we remove, uh, yes, it is time. Uh, well, we'll remove the highlights and um, uh, talk about these players. But Willis Furtado also has not played since the African Cup, so we remove both him and uh, Wagner from the list. Um, Lisandro Semedo remains at the possible level, but we have a couple of players coming in uh, ahead of him here. And um, we're going to say uh, Ryan Mendez uh, now move from the forward uh, over to the right wing here as a definite candidate. And uh, even though Gary Mendez, oh, sorry, Gary Rodriguez uh, is a left winger, he's been playing more on the right, sometimes as a forward too. But we have him as a likely candidate over here too. So those are our uh, three candidates, Ryan Mendez, uh, definite. Gary Rodriguez, uh, probably a definite candidate to make the squad, but uh, a likely candidate over here on the right wing. And Lisandro Semedo, uh, a possible candidate, but his name does change to black uh, text because he was selected for the previous cup. Okay, let's move on to the forward line then. And we begin with uh, attacking midfielders in 2021. And we had a definite candidate in uh, Kenny Rocha Santos, uh, who we have since moved to uh, central midfield. And we had a possible candidate in Helder Tavares, uh, who was not selected for the squad. Um, and we had a retired candidate um, uh, as well, and that's all we had uh, on the list for attacking midfield. Um, so let's... Uh, talk about it. Actually, the position of attacking midfield or central attacking midfield was not used in the cup, so we didn't uh, have anyone playing there, uh, even though Kenny Rocha Santos was selected uh, for the squad. Um, but we're going to remove him uh, from the list here uh, because um, we've moved him back to central midfield. Although uh, he did, he has popped up as an attacking midfielder, I think once or twice over the past two years. Uh, Helder Tavares has not been uh, 
uh, selected since June of 2022. So uh, he did actually play after the Cup, despite not being selected for it, um, but it's now gone. Uh, and we, um, we do have a couple of candidates to add here. So let me just say that uh, since the, the Cup, uh, the position has been rarely used, but it has been used a couple of times uh, in a, say, 4-2-3-1 formation, something like that. Uh, we are going to put two attacking midfielders at the portable level here. So Leandro Andrade, not to be confused with Patrick Andrade, the central midfielder, and uh, David Tavares, not to be confused with the several other Tavareses on the, on the team. And um, we have a, a player named Telmo uh, Ar Arcanjo at the um, possible but unlikely level. Um, he's also an injury doubt in addition to being uh, uh, unlikely. Uh, but we do mention him because he's one of the players who did play when they had an attacking midfielder spot. And uh, Leandro Andrade did too. So um, maybe they'll bring... Um, one of them along for the cup just in case they uh, use that position. But as I said, I think um, um, Morera also uh, may have started as an attacking midfielder as well. Anyway, uh, not a, a commonly used position for the team, so let's move on to forwards. And back in 2021, we had Ryan Mendez as a definite candidate and Julio Tavares, another Tavares, uh, also as a definite candidate. Uh, we had a possible candidate in Gilson Tavares. Uh, Gilson Tavares sometimes goes by his name uh, Benchimo. Uh, Benchimo, maybe to distinguish himself or to avoid confusion with the other Tavareses. And um, we also had a player who seemed to be off the squad at the time, uh, uh, Giannini, uh, who ended up being selected. So we won't mention the other players who uh, were at that level and were not selected, but it was a surprise that Giannini was selected. However, upon selection, he was uh, later replaced due to injury. So he might have gotten the final tournament in there, um, but uh, uh, didn't and uh, was replaced, replaced by Wagner Goncalves, I think. And uh, so uh, that means that Giannini has not played since November 2020. So uh, he is uh, well and truly gone from the squad, uh, even though he's actually just 32 years old. So um, not as old as uh, Julio Tavares, uh, who's 35 years old, and uh, we'll come back to him. Uh, okay, so in the cup, the forward position uh, was played by Julio Tavares in the first two games. Uh, of the cup. Uh, however, they didn't seem satisfied with him and they started using out of position players uh, in games three and four. In game four, it was Gary uh, Rodriguez, and uh, we're going to see that that continued on into the future. But let's finish our uh, business in 2021. Uh, we're going to remove Ryan uh, Mendez from the list here because we've uh, moved him to the right winger position, but he remains a definite candidate. And uh, Julio Tavares, um, uh, as I say, 35 years old and uh, did appear after the Cup, but uh, last played in June 2022, or last appeared in June uh, 2022. Um, sorry, I deleted the wrong Tavares there. So uh, Julio Tavares off the squad. Actually, Gilson Tavares was selected, so I don't know why his name uh, wasn't highlighted, but he was just a, a substitute there. And, of course, uh, Giannini surprisingly selected, but now long off the team. Um, okay, uh, so we'll introduce the candidates that have been there since. Um, the first one is at the definite level. His name is Duck. D-U-K, and uh, he uh, doesn't look like uh, he's going to be a starter, but uh, is called up uh, regularly enough that we think he will be um, uh, definitely called up to the squad, uh, probably as a substitute, which we'll get to soon. Uh, Gilson Tavares, 
remains a possible candidate. Now his name is in black because he's been through a tournament. And uh, um, we also have, uh, I'll put his name because he features in the narrative, possible but unlikely Brian Texera. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, and those are all the candidates we have as a forward. So here's what has happened since uh, the cup. Uh, we saw that they were scrambling in the cup using left and right wingers um, uh, to cover the spot. Um, it has uh, mostly, it was mostly newcomer Bebe when he arrived uh, that has covered the forward spot. But they have been trying out players such as Duck, who I think started three games, uh, Gilson, uh, Gilson Tavares, and uh, Texera. Uh, have all been tried out in the position. So it seems like they got as far as settling on Duck as a substitute, uh, but they don't seem to have found one. So in the last two games in November, they went back to uh, Gary Rodriguez and Bebe as the center forward uh, there. And we suspect that that's probably uh, what's going to be, uh, what we'll see in the cup is one of those wingers uh, playing in the position. Maybe Duck will get uh, a chance. Uh, okay, so I think that uh, completes our business. And uh, we move on to part three, where we're going to do a spotlight review. So let us begin with the manager, Bubista. Um, we do think he will... Uh, make it to the cup and uh, not a lot of big problems on the team and he's a long-term manager with them so we're going to consider him a definite candidate for goalkeeper uh, even though he's only played a little more than half of the games uh, over the past two years we still think uh, Vozina is going to be the uh, starter uh, in that position um, moving on to central defense we think um, Roberto Lopez is the only one that we can uh, really um, confidently say is going to be the starter there. Uh, his name is also Pico. You might see him listed as uh, Pico. Uh, in terms of his uh, partner, we don't think it's going to be Dini Borges, uh, even though we do think uh, he'll definitely be on the squad. Uh, we think the more likely a partner alongside of him uh, is uh, Logan Costa, but we're not uh, willing to put his name down. Uh, there. Okay, let's uh, go to uh, left backs, and we think um, it's going to be a rotation of uh, João Paulo Fernandes and Dylan Alvarez uh, there in that position, which may turn into a uh, winger uh, position. Um, on the right, though, we think it's definitely uh, Willy Semedo, even though he's coded as a left winger himself. We think he's going to be the starting right back. Uh, moving on to the central midfield, uh, we said uh, Jamiro Montero uh, uh, is uh, not necessarily going to be a starter as a central midfielder, but we think he'll be a starter uh, somewhere on the field and, you know, uh, more than 50% chance of that being a central midfielder. And uh, newcomer DeRoy Duarte, uh, we think, has worked himself into a starting position. Uh, we also have a newcomer as our starting left winger or left attacking midfielder, and uh, that's Bebe. And we wouldn't be surprised uh, to see some rotation up top here, which I'll mention at the end. On the right wing, we think uh, Ryan Mendes has carved out the position uh, for himself. And uh, we're going to put as a um, in blue, so uh, not, not the 100% green, but maybe the 67% blue, uh, Gary, Rodriguez, uh, Gary Rodriguez or Gary Mendes Rodriguez, perhaps even starting as a forward, because we don't have a name uh, for a forward. We think it is going to be one of the wingers here. So uh, we do think there'll be rotation among Bebe, Mendes, and Gary Rodriguez. Um, uh, but we're not fully confident that Gary Rodriguez will be a starter. Perhaps they'll find a forward in the meanwhile or something along those lines. Anyway, that's it. Our spotlight review. And uh, let's finish by previewing part two then. 
And uh, our main uh, purposes in part two will be to go through the list that we created here once we know what the final roster is going to be and kind of compare the two. So we will uh, say which candidates made it and which candidates didn't. And the second main function in part two will be uh, to cover injuries, uh, any injuries that come up. There were a few here, and I think... Um, uh, uh, we didn't think any of them were kind of necessarily long term that might continue into the gut, but we will clarify that uh, in part two. So thank you for uh, listening to part one, and we'll see you probably in early January for part two. We originally planned to tag on our past, present, and future plans for the media cast, but we have instead decided to put a link to that 10 minute video in the show notes. It covers what we're working on and what we plan to do over the next nine months. We would like to thank Pixabay and Alexei Ivanov of Mappa Music for the wonderful background music accompanying this media cast.